And now, Fairfax Breakfast Club with your host, Basil Lemba. Welcome to the Fairfax Breakfast Club show. My name is Basil Lemba and I will be your host. The Fairfax Breakfast Club is a weekly program in which we bring you valuable and workable know-how you can use to improve your networking skills and grow your business. We always start the show with a quote. Today's quote is, there are only four great arts, music, painting, sculpture, and ornamental pastry. Architecture being perhaps the least banal derivative of the latter. And that is from Julia Child. With us today in the studio, we have a very special guest, someone who specializes in pastry and can do a great many different one mm. and different, uh, different kinds for that matter. His name is Dennis Stanley with Chantel's Cake and Pastry. Hello, Dennis. Hi, how are you doing today, sir? Good, how are you? Nice to see you again. It took a while, we finally got you on the show. Well, yeah, glad to see you again, too. It took a little crowbar to get you back <laughs> <on>. <laughs> out of that store, right? You had to get a new crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, tell us what makes you right away, what makes you different from any other baker. One of the things that make us different from a lot of the bakers you have here in this region or, or even in the United States, for an example, mm -hmm. Chantel's cater to clients with food allergies. Mm -hmm. That's one of our niches that we work around. Okay. We can work with clients that have like no egg, mm -hmm. no dairy, mm -hmm. no soy, mm -hmm. no flour, mm -hmm. no sugar, mm -hmm. no food coloring, no gluten. And also we work with clients that have no, uh, we can also do a cake with no, um, Diabetics, and some of our cakes that we have, we may have more than one allergy in the same cake. Mm -hmm. So we first listen to a client when they tell us they have a food allergy, okay. and then we just stamp the paper so we know what recipe we can use for that particular client. Got gotcha. you. Now, you may not want to tell us, but how do you do that? <laughs> how do you don't do have it? to tell us. You don't well, have to answer the question. I tell you that, we have, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to kill me. We have a funeral tomorrow. Don't, don't, don't. Well, that's good because I've never, I rarely hear about mm -hmm. such a thing. Right. And then with the allergy mushroomings, literally, yes. in this day and age, mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely, that's fantastic that I have a place they can go. Yes. First of all, we also do cakes that have regular full load stuff in it too. We can do it sure. with eggs and butter and the flour and all that stuff in it too. Mm -hmm. But some things I find out now when I go to a lot of network meetings, mm -hmm. um, the first thing I ask to people in the audience is, how many people do you know that have a food allergy? And as of now, at least 95% of the people oh, yeah. here will go up oh, because yes. a lot of the people you have now have food allergies, mm -hmm. and some of them have in all their life, and they never knew what they was getting sick from. Mm -hmm. So as the doctors mm -hmm. get more and more experience on technology, they find out someone may have a gluten allergy, mm -hmm. and they might have been treated from indigestion, mm -hmm. or they might they could have an egg allergy and get hives or the throat swell up, and it could be coming from the eggs. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well. Interesting. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Well, uh, well, the one person who didn't raise their hand, they didn't just hear the question. Then. Again. <laughs> the one person did not raise their hand. Maybe they they could, they the could have noticed when they had a food allergy. <laughs> <laughs> and something else that makes Chantel's look different from a lot of our competitors is that every cake that we make in the shop is made per customer. You won't be able to walk in our shop and see where you see a lot of showcases where everything is made and you pick from the case. Oh, okay. What happens oh, is yeah. a lot of our clients, they call us up, mm -hmm. <clears throat> just like going to a restaurant, you get a menu, mm -hmm. and they look at the menu, they tell us what flavor cake, what icing, what stock, they even tell us what color you want. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our clients may use our cakes for centerpieces. Okay. So that keeps you having to spend extra money, just use the cake as a centerpiece and be able to eat it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. So now what are the different uh, arena that you serve, like wedding, individual, who do you serve, one, two person, three, four, six, five? Mm -hmm. Well, every part, every part of the year brings different types of business. Mm -hmm. um, so you may have a section where there's a lot of wedding cakes going on, then you may have a section where a lot of birthdays or even the holiday season coming up. And you find out most time in this area, people start shopping at least three to four months ahead of schedule oh, really? when they want a particular cake, oh, okay. especially when it comes to the wedding cakes. Mm -hmm. So they may start shopping three or four, three to six months out for a wedding cake, and that way they oh. find out where it's going to be mm -hmm. and the flavors, and they come in and do a tasting, and then you get the design of the cake. Mm -hmm. so that's what's making it special about the wedding cakes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the same thing with the birthday cakes. So a lot of times when a child comes in or a mother comes in, Especially if they have a food allergy or don't have a food allergy, they get to come in and bring in to us and sit down and we get to design their cake like an architect, like architect, architecture do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You did a cake for us for the 100, for celebrating 100. For your 100th anniversary, we did your cake. Well, I didn't know they ate the whole thing. Yes. I did not see anything at all. And I'm still getting calls from that cake today. If people are calling As a matter of fact, the place where you had your 
100th anniversary. Mm -hmm. They signed a contract with me. We do cakes for them every month. Oh, really? Yes. So I, I do I, thank I, you for that. I, I, <laughs> well, I don't remember getting the commission. Though. Your commission? I do have some back commission. That Seriously, check was put in the mail. <laughs> 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 Apparently, your address has changed. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I keep getting the bag. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely had your cake. I loved it mm -hmm. very much. So I mean, I can attest to that. Mm -hmm. Your cakes are different. Yes. They they don't have that heavy feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have this sensible. Most most of them, I'm thinking most people are. Mm -hmm. When I, I put something on my tongue, I can mm -hmm. tell immediately. Thank you. And I notice every time I do a trade show, you're the first one in line. <laughs> <laughs> but my, the one on the cake, I did not even see it. Though even your, uh, the guy working for you to put, put something inside for me, but they found it and ate it. Mm -hmm. and it was absolutely delicious. Thank you. And what, what we do at Chantel's is, like you mentioned, some of the cakes are, are light on the tongue. So when a lot of clients come in, instead of getting a buttercream on the cake all the time, you mm -hmm. may get a whipped cream. Or, or some clients like buttercream, some like whipped cream, mm -hmm. some like the heavy, some like the, the cakes that's not so heavy. And then we can cater to the angel food, to the strawberry, the chocolate, whatever flavor you want. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily you always have to get a heavy cake. So you can get a chocolate cake mm -hmm. and put a, a chocolate whipped cream on it and mm -hmm. get the same quality as a gourmet cake where it may have a heavy chocolate buttercream on it. Mm -hmm. And then you can also take and just take, instead of getting a regular yellow cake or a chocolate cake, you can get a gourmet cake, do something like yellow, chocolate, lemon, raspberry, marble, spice, or strawberry. Mm -hmm. and you can mix all those up. Okay. And something else that also makes Chantel a little different from a lot of my competitors, we also deliver. Uh -huh. We can deliver cakes anywhere in the metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the clients may have be busy or if you got an admin that don't have a few hours for lunch and they got to pull the cake together, all the party supplies together, mm -hmm. they can just call us up. Mm -hmm. We can deliver the cake to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we have a gift shop. So if a client's calling in with a baby shower cake, they can also come in or we can deliver the baby shower cake. Mm -hmm. We can deliver the baby shower gift that goes with it. If they got to have the balloons for it, we can have the balloons to coordinate. Mm -hmm. If they got to get the paper supplies, they can come in the shop, they can walk out with a cake, the paper supplies, the, the gift to go with the cake, the balloons, the card, the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. And if an admin is only having an hour out for lunch, if they got to go five places to pick up the cake and get all the supplies, mm -hmm. they wasted their whole mm -hmm. hour lunch break. Where they come to us, call us up, place the cake order, and we can do in and out in five minutes. Or <clears throat> if we deliver the cake mm -hmm. for them, all mm -hmm. they got is open door, we come in, serve everything on the table, we call it a uh, party in the box. So everything you need for that party is in a box. Mm -hmm. All you got is open door, and we walk in and set it up for you. Oh. And then we also ship cakes anywhere in the United States, mm -hmm. especially with the allergy cakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of clients that have food allergies. They're anywhere in the United States, they call us up and we can ship a cake. As long as we can get the order in and get it out at FedEx before 10 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. we can have the cake in the mail at 10 o'clock at night at the airport, and they will have it the next morning if it's on a residential area. If it's on a rural area, we may not be able to guarantee our time, mm -hmm. but we can still get them a cake overnight. Okay, let me ask you this, but the cake overnight, does it, does it need breaks? No, we, ah. we don't send sheet cakes or, or big cakes. Most of the cakes we send would be like a six, or eight, or 10 inch round. Mm -hmm. And then, no, the cakes goes out frozen. We, we ah. freeze the cake that morning, uh -huh. or the day before, and we wrap it, seal the cake up, and we put it in a styrofoam cooler, and then the cake goes in the container with the um, package around it. It goes, and then we wrap it in the uh, styrofoam cooler, we tape that up airtight, and depends on how far it has to go, we put an uh, ice pack in it. And if they're in a residential area, the mm -hmm. cake goes leave my shop at 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And they would have it between 9 and 10 o'clock the next morning. Mm -hmm. By the time they get the cake, it's just starting to thaw out. And there's an old myth that some frozen cakes are not as good the next day after they're frozen. That's one of the oldest myths you can get. Mm -hmm. A lot of times if you freeze the cakes, they stay fresher. So as long as the cake is being shipped frozen, mm -hmm. it'll be fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Interesting. So I'm going to ship a couple of cakes for you. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to receive. Okay. You're I'm ready, ready to receive. No, we need to ship some for you so you can see, you can see my testimony that they can come out good. <laughs> well, I'm right here in Fairfax, so that would be fine. No, we can, we can, since you're here in Fairfax, we can hand deliver your cake for you. Okay. But if you got somebody, you know anybody in California? Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. So let's ship them a cake. And then they can yeah. call you up and tell you if it came out good. We see who'll take care of the bill. Let, let's figure that out. Who's going to take care of the bill first? Who's going to take care of the bill? Yeah. I'm sure we work that out. <laughs> that check that keeps coming back and forth, we get to take care of the bill. And then something else that we do, we work with a lot of bakeries um, that even could be around the United States. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of companies, you know how you wire flowers? Mm -hmm. Where you, yeah, can take, you can call, you can go to any bakery, uh -huh. any florist, and you can walk in and you can wire, go in that bakery and wire flowers to somewhere in another state, say so mm -hmm. in California, and you want to send your loved one some flowers in here in Virginia. Mm -hmm. 
then what would happen is a bakery in one of those locations would take the order, write down everything that needs to be on that cake order, then mm -hmm. they will call a bakery, which is, we want the bakeries here in Northern Virginia in the metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. They can call me up, give me the order, mm -hmm. and if you've got a loved one here in Virginia, they can take the order in California, and they can ship, email a fax order to me here, and we hand deliver the cake where it needs to go. Oh, okay. So that way you can wire cakes just like you wire flowers. Wow. Another thing that we also involve with another company that's out in California, mm -hmm. we can put a cake in a war zone. If you know someone's fighting a war and their mm -hmm. birthday or whatever came up, yeah. we can contact them and you find out where they're at and we can put a birthday cake, whatever the occasion is, a cake in the war zone so they don't feel like they're left out. Wow. Yes. That's remarkable. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that Shannon Kells can do that's a little bit different from the other bakeries. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Are we going to have a cake on May 17? Are you going to do a cake for us? No. May 17? Mm -hmm. For your, which, this is your 101. The next expo. The 101 is going to be at the same location? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have a, also a lot Well, of you have to, being that you use them too, and they, it's, it's getting orders. And even, though I don't, <laughs> maybe even though my commission to check in the, in the mail, but mm -hmm. I well, think you should do that. Well, look at it this way. Until you get the check, you get interest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to figure out the interest here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, so now what other avenue, how do you grow your business? I, I'm just trying to get, you know, I would like for you to give some tips of recommendation. What I doing? found out that helped me to grow my business, mm -hmm. you have, you don't just look at one avenue. Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. just look at email marketing or don't just look at um, just sending out um, Mail marketing. Mm -hmm. What I found out to help me grow my business is being in person. Mm -hmm. When I go out, I, I love networking. Mm -hmm. We learn how to network and we go to events like yours. Mm -hmm. Good. And then we go, to, I just look at the, the, the events in the area mm -hmm. and then I personally go to events. Mm -hmm. And something that gets me into a lot of doors is I bring a cake along with me. Yeah, that's nice. I take a cake along with me and say, can, nice. I call them up and we've got an event going on. Mind if I come, I either bring a cake. And at the same time, who can say no to that? Unless they're a kicker. Right. And, then, no, 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 so and, then, and then, then we also and then we also take gift certificates. Oh. So you find Ooh. out you can take a gift certificate. And if you had a networking event, something I found out if you had a networking event, mm -hmm. if you had to pay to get into it, mm -hmm. and you round talking to everyone that's in a networking event, if there's a hundred people there, mm -hmm. there's no way you're going to hit a hundred people within the time allotted for the event. That's for sure. So a good thing to do is take a gift certificate mm -hmm. or take a prize mm -hmm. or a door prize. Mm -hmm. And when they call that door prize out, every hundred person in that audience, your name know. get brought to them. So that's, that's one of the ways I found out about networking. Mm -hmm. The more you give, the more that's going to come back wow. to you. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> at your events now, you're going to let me in the door so I can bring a cake. Yeah, well, we already have a table. Yeah, bring a cake. I just think that well, you are in a business which you call show and tell, or mm -hmm. the taste it, and then because you can tell somebody about all the greatness of the different taste and what mm -hmm. have you, mm -hmm. it doesn't register. But once they taste the cake, mm -hmm. that's another story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some cakes are beautiful. Some good inside. Some sit outside and they don't be as good. What I found out with a lot of clients that a lot of my clients now will watch to keep the cooking shows on TV, okay. and they will see a lot of the. <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot of shows on TV, they have a lot of founded on it. Then they may come in the next day and want one of some of those cakes. Some of those cakes that you see on TV takes two or three days or a week to build. And a lot of those cakes are covered in founded in Rice Krispies. So when they look at those TV shows mm -hmm. and watch those cakes, you have to keep in mind that some of the cakes, some of the parts that you look at, it's not real. Matter of fact, a lady called me today and she wanted me to do a drum, a drum cake. We had the round drum on the bottom mm -hmm. and then we had the drum on the top. Mm -hmm. So one is sitting on the other. I had to let her know that the drum on the bottom is a real cake, where the cake she's looking on top is styrofoam. So what they do is they take the styrofoam and they take the fondant and cover the styrofoam, so you don't know that that's a dummy cake mm -hmm. until you take it off and then you you um, cut the real cake. And a lot of the fondant cakes that a lot of clients by now want, some bakers will upscale their cakes, putting fondant on it. And one of the things about fondant is once you put fondant on a cake. 99% of the time that cake needs to sit out until the client get it. So if a cake requires someone to start working on it on a Monday mm -hmm. because so much detail on it with fondant, mm -hmm. by Saturday if that cake is, is for Saturday, for mm -hmm. example, that mm -hmm. cake is going to dry out. So that's why you see a lot of cakes that have fondant on it, it's kind of dry inside. So what we do at Chantel is we try to tell a lot of the clients if the cake needs fondant, 
What is fondant? Fondant is that hard icing you see that they roll out like pie dough. Oh, okay. And once you ice a cake, you take and lay it over the cake. Mm -hmm. That is fondant. Mm -hmm. You can take and color it any way you want. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It gives a perfect presentation. Mm -hmm. But if you can do a buttercream cake that don't require fondant, mm -hmm. then you, that's the best way to go. And then maybe you just use fondant decorations on it. Okay. And one, it'll cut your cost down. Because if you put a fondant on a cake, let's say the regular cake is $300, mm -hmm. And you can do all the decorations in buttercream. Mm -hmm. And if you put fondant on the cake, you probably make that cake now will come out to be about maybe two, three hundred dollars. Wow. Just because you're paying someone for the fondant and you pay for the extra labor to go into it. So you're paying for fondant and you're paying for labor. So doesn't we can try to help a client save some money. Mm -hmm. and if you help someone save some money as hard as they work for it, they're gonna come out come back and see you again. Oh definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So how's how's your organization coming to help people network as well? Well, we host, and I'm glad you asked. I'm generally I'm the one who asked question. Congratulations, Dennis. Huh? <laughs> 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 so the interview is more about me, it's about you as well. Yeah, I want to make sure I know no, what you're doing. But being that you doing. insist, I'll yes. answer the question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we host monthly event, folks, in uh, Fairfax, mm -hmm. the second or third Thursday of the month. Mm -hmm. We have a breakfast event. Uh, so the next one is on April 11. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you'll, uh, this will be on when uh, you'll have the time to attend. Mm -hmm. We're doing extremely well. We have about 30 people attending. Mm -hmm. In February, in fact, we have 38 people. Mm, that's good. Yes. That's I, how I first met you. Yes. I, that's how I met you networking. Yes. And we, how long have we been known each other now? For about Lord knows, six, seven years. Six, seven years. Yes. So as you can see, our network is still going. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, I go to a networking event, you there. Oh, if, really? Or either you there, I'm there, or we're in passing. Oh. No? Okay. Well, being See, I've been watching you. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep your eyes on people. <laughs> <laughs> Track them. <laughs> <laughs> and also, folks, I want to tell you about the expo we hear or mentioning coming up on May 17. In fact, we're going to run a clip on, uh, on that show over here for a few minutes. Welcome back. So yes, we have on May 17th, having the show, okay. we're going to have, we came last time, we're mm -hmm. going to have 100 exhibitors, mm -hmm. we're expecting four to 500 business people there. Wow. How many do you have at the last event? Uh, between 350 and 400. Repeat the 400? Yes. We're starting early, we're using different ways really to promote the event, texting mm -hmm. and uh, more of uh, personal contact and LinkedIn, which mm -hmm. we're using now much more heavily mm -hmm. uh, to get many more people there. Mm -hmm. But it went very well, very well. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, so we're doing that again. And also we're increasing the number of seminars. I don't think I ever mentioned that. We find some people, being that our seminar are free, people mm -hmm. come to the seminar mm -hmm. and then do visit the exhibit or the network mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So we double the number of seminars mm -hmm. this time around so people have more choice right. and then they can come and get the information mm -hmm. that'll help them grow their business. So how will the people in the seminar, or people that, that pay to go to your event, how will they benefit from it other than just paying a booth and people coming around to it? So for example, the reason why I'm asking the question is, me as a bakery, mm -hmm. I, I come there and I sit at my table mm -hmm. and if you got 500 people coming through that event, mm -hmm. how would your, how would your uh, expo benefit me if all hundred people, five hundred people can't get to my table. They will. They don't come at all time. Uh -huh. Because sometimes when we say 500 people, some, some people, or even an uh -huh. can say, well, I, di I didn't see it. Well, the 500 do not come at all time. Uh -huh. The expo is going from 7.30 to 3 o'clock. Uh -huh. People say, well, I'm coming from 9 to 10, or uh -huh. I'm from 2 to 3, or from 1 to... So it, they don't come all at the same time. Uh -huh. That's why, that, this is a great thing. Then mm -hmm. they trickle in and then anywhere, mm -hmm. and they roam around and you have that situation. But all the 500 do not come at once. If they did, you will feel it. There mm -hmm. won't be room okay. for anybody. Okay. But they come and rotate. That's a very good question because the other thing we do is um, we always have a major door price. Okay. It can be a big painting, it can be an airfare ticket or what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, for them to win that, they have to visit at least 20 exhibitors. Okay. When they come in, when they sign up, we give them the chart mm -hmm. with all the exhibitors. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what happened. When they are given the chart mm -hmm. and they are told you need to visit 20 to qualify for the door price, right. They go, just they go aside and start marking who they're going to see exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They don't just do the sign, 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 because mm -hmm. it's silly. Mm -hmm. Now they start looking and say, oh, if this guy's a baker, well, I need to go and see a baker. Mm -hmm. So the guy coming to you now is interest, has some right. interest. Yes. 
And that's what the last expo we have somebody telling me they got 17 leads. I know the woman got 12 customers mm -hmm. out of that mm -hmm. because the people coming to them have mm -hmm. some interest, which is a good mm -hmm. thing because it gives you a selection too. The guy who's not interested in the cake won't necessarily come see you. Right. He can pass by, but he's not like, I got to go and see this mm -hmm. baker guy. Mm -hmm. But the one who has something in mind, birthday, shower, bird, shower, mm -hmm. uh, whatever is good coming, nice coming to see you, mm -hmm. and it's more likely turn into business. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's pretty good because I'm there, and one thing I found out also in my networking, when I go out to do cakes, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I try to carry a variety of everything that we carry, that's especially smart. my literature. Mm -hmm. So when I go out, instead of working, I found out some clients, for example, may not like cake. Mm -hmm. So then we'll bring a cake. And then we'll bring, we also cater clients that have, like, let's say if it's the cake. If you don't like cake, then we may have pies. Mm -hmm. Some don't like pies, some don't like cake, we may mm -hmm. do cookies. Mm -hmm. And then we also do quiche and we do cobblers. Mm -hmm. So one, and when, on our menu, if you take a look at it, one of the things that we just did now is we created a gluten-free mm -hmm. web page. Mm -hmm because we're finding out now more and more people have the gluten allergy. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we try to market now, especially at an event like yours, mm -hmm. we let everybody know there, there that we have now have the gluten-free page. Mm -hmm. So they can go there and look at gluten-free, and that's starting to be more and more and more. And you're finding out now, even though we cater to clients that have food allergies, for mm -hmm. example, a lot of clients are staying away from things like gluten because they feel better. <coughs> you find out a lot of clients will get away from eggs mm -hmm. or, or some of the other things that we call them allergies. Mm -hmm. But you find out depends on where you're from or certain things or certain health restrictions that you want. You stay away from things, not mm -hmm. saying you're allergic to it. Mm -hmm. You may just stay away from it because you feel better. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And I have some clients that say they have the gluten allergy. When they stop taking gluten, <coughs> I don't have a gluten allergy. They life just came up one morning, flipped the light switch on, like every day is a sunshine day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, do the thing I can do, you can put a cake there and put a sign, it's a gluten free, mm -hmm. to get their attention. Being right. that that is a big item now. Mm -hmm. Now, when they come in, boom, they see it right then and there. You don't so, need to talk to them even. Mm -hmm. So, would it be benefiting me as to go into your event? When you do your marketing, you may already say, do you take some of your vendors and say, certain vendors there may is catering to, or do you spotlight the vendors ahead of schedule? So I didn't get that. Do you spotlight some of the vendors ahead of schedule? So when you send your email marketing out, <coughs> would you spotlight a vendor? What we do generally is a sponsor gets spotlighted. Mm -hmm. On the website, the logo is there on top and what mm -hmm. have you. But one of the things we're doing also, I'm glad you asked that question, is we're having a seminar for all vendors mm -hmm. on uh, April the 4th mm -hmm. at that same location, which will, I think, will be to give them the information, but also give them the opportunity mm -hmm. To, to get to know one another as mm -hmm. well. So when they're coming in the day off, they know who is where, they can refer to one another mm -hmm. or what have you. So that, that thing that helped the show tremendously and it helped them, mm -hmm. they know who is on. It's like anything, you walk in there, you don't know anybody, you gotta get to know them before something happens. Right. But here they met already, they network and what have you, they know who mm -hmm. is on another. I think that will improve uh, the revenue, mm -hmm. the, the show for-, for, for By having a vendors meeting ahead of schedule? Yes, and, and we, we have that meeting because <coughs> there is a know-how to exhibit. Mm -hmm. There are things you wanna do before, you need to do mm -hmm. before, during, and after. Mm -hmm. But they may not necessarily know that. But even if they knew those things, it would be a good thing for them to hear them again. Mm -hmm. Repetition is a key thing in learning. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're putting that show there. Mm -hmm. Because somebody can come and give us the money and then have a, buy a table. Mm -hmm. But they don't know what to do exactly. Right. And at the end of the show, they say, well, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Well, they did not apply the know-how mm -hmm. to be successful. Right. So we're taking that responsibility mm -hmm. now to bring them in and teach them what they need to do mm -hmm. so that they can be successful. Mm -hmm. That's where if it's sake landing for me and so my business, when, if I'm there, if I don't market that I have the allergy stuff, for example, then they may come in and, and five people could have walked by that could have had a dairy allergy. Mm -hmm. So I, as me as a business, in my networking, it's important to me to market my people with allergies and my regular clients and, and put out an information on my table and mm -hmm. keep iterating that we cater to clients with these allergies. We mm -hmm. cater to this, we cater to that. And then you may find out that some of them, like I said earlier, a client may say, but I have a dairy allergy, I may have an egg allergy. And one thing I also found out here in Northern Virginia, or as far as I can reach now, mm -hmm. a lot of the daycares won't let cupcakes or cakes come in because of food allergy mm -hmm. or the nut allergy. 90% of the schools in the area now, if a parent or someone go to a, any grocery store or whatever, if that place cannot guarantee them that they have a, that cake, cupcake or cake is nut free, they can't get it to the front door. Mm -hmm. One of the hardest stories I heard over Halloween, for example, is parents stay up all night long and bake cupcakes with their kids. And the kids are on the other side of that door, I went to school, and parents is coming in to go through that door to take the cupcakes in, mm -hmm. but 
the school principal stop them at the front door and say, well, these cupcakes can't come in the store, in the school, because you can't guarantee that the child in the school has a nut allergy. Mm -hmm. So that way you got to take those cupcakes and you got to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. So then they got to go find a bakery or whoever can guarantee that there's a nut allergy, but they're not going to hardly do it within that 12, that window, that period. Mm -hmm. So that's why we build a relationship with most of the daycares or even the schools in the area, mm -hmm. that once a cake leave our shop, we'll stamp the box and telling them what the cake has in it and why it's not in the cake. And we will find out that if a cake, a cupcake goes to a school for the first time, before that cake gets in the door and a parent or, ch or a child eats it, mm -hmm. then the school will call us up to make sure that cake came from my location. So we can guarantee that that student on the other side of that door can drive a cupcake and a cake and it's nut free. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think if for the sake of the expo, you can put a bow. Just say, uh, make cake free of what about food allergies? Yes, a big fat board. Like mm -hmm. Really list them up. That way, you get their attention. Mm -hmm. We make, I would say, make regular cake mm -hmm. and cake with, to address the following allergen. Just list them up big. Mm -hmm. That's how you get their attention. Right. I think. Mm -hmm. That'd be, a, that'd be a good idea. We should do that next time we do. Yes, big board, put it and go to King Coast, make a big board sitting there, have your cake, and then put that big sign there. Mm -hmm. Sitting there, and then they, because that's really uh, what, because uh, a lot of business today gets, I was in a kind of seminar last time, I said, Apple, highly successful company. Mm -hmm. Do you know that they have a niche? Yes. Seven percent, that's all they're going after. Mm -hmm. So the moral of the story is have yourself a niche. Anything has come extra, mm -hmm. but you have a niche that you aggressively, this, this, they come to you, you don't even ask them. Right. So if you market your niche right, yes. then the clients will come to you. Yes. If you build, they will come. You got that right. <laughs> that, that really <laughs> summed it up, totally and completely built, and I could ever sum it up. Thank you very much for tuning. We're looking forward to seeing you next time. That was Denise. Get your kick from him. <laughs> have a good, nice evening. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs>